But it was a uh, beautiful weather up there in uh in Peru and you get this sort of stuff, you know. This is at um Silistani. Silistani be a cool video too, these chulpa towers, man. Cause I did and you can see that the this the the correspondence between these and Gobekli Tepe. I could tell the story about how Graham on the 2013 trip <laughs> he was trying to research that stuff and then i actually went up to um kutimbo this is quite a hike uh, this is at the high high point driving down to the lake <sighs> what was that 550 Big steps. I think it was a bit more than that. <laughs> 13,000 13, feet or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we should be about 13,000 feet elevation now. At least 13, I think. Yeah, so it's it's like the, the Altiplano. Check it out. So this is you have to. This is it's a it's tough. You you're up off the. So this is where the bus is down on the road here. So you're up probably 500 feet on one of these oh, yeah. things. <laughs> These mesa, whatever you call these things, there's a term mesa, whatever. What if it's like wide, more wide than it is high? There's a name, and if it's higher than it is wide, there's a name for one of these things. But you're already at like twelve thousand six hundred feet down here at the ground, at the bottom level, and then you've got to climb up like staircases to get up to like thirteen thousand feet. And I think I actually pulled up an altimeter fine. at the top. So it's yeah, you not a lot of air to work with up here. Walk my ass up there, past everyone. So you know. Big dude, I might be, but I can, I can walk around. All these blocks. 3 p.m. PST is 10 a.m. EDST for Australians. Okay, there you go. Crazy. Yeah, they carried this up here, and they made this. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. They carried this up here, and someone made this. Like these big stones were moved up here. There's some bigger. So this is like. They would build these ramps. This is Inca, probably Inca work on the right. Then they build these ramps to get to the top of these the megalithic stuff. These Chulpa towers that have fallen apart, and you can see the big oh. megalithic shaped blocks. Katimbo. That somebody moved up. So you can see they built these up, walls yeah. and ramps. Like this is the this two again. You see the primitive stuff. You see the advanced stuff. Oh yeah. It's quite remarkable. There's big square, square towers, and then these have the shapes on them. So this is what Graham went and visited in 2013 on his it's own. Giant, though. And he put it in his book, Magicians of the Gods, yeah. with the relationship yeah, between um, uh, the figures here and then the figures you see at Gobekli Tepe. They look very similar. I see. Don't break it. <laughs> yeah, it's good joints. Very it's my buddy Kyle. Tauri. He but comes on a lot of these trips. What year is this from? 2021? This was a COVID trip. Standard polygonal masonry. Yeah. Reminds this stone here, reminds me of the 12 angle stone. Butte and Mesa, there wow. you go. That's the terms. 2021, yeah. Some hold these stones up up on top of this butte or mesa. Is it mate? I think a butte is when it's when it's Taller than it is wide, and a mesa is when it's wider than it is tall. Yeah, Peru. Uh, I think we're on the Peruvian side of the lake here still, yes. <sighs> Lots of shape stone. And again, these things are destroyed. Like the ones the ones at Silistani look like they've been exploded almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what Hancock came up here to find. The animal markings on here. Yes, yeah, so it. These are typically known as chulpa towers. I don't. I think they'll hold up here. I'm not sure if it's andesite or basalt or granite. Sorry. Yeah, we didn't get. Some that's right. We didn't get out of Peru because Bolivia was basically shut. Basalt, yeah, black basalt. basalt so you have these shapes. These animals see the tail here, carved in, and then there's another one down below it. That's a good shot. Jimmy was on this trip too. It's in high relief. Oh, 
Then you got this other guy down here. Uh, 13,000 feet about here. I think we were just over 13,000 feet. I do whip out the altimeter at some point here. It's my buddy Joe, Kyle, Wilco, our shaman. He's awesome. I'm out of language. Mm. You see here the most beautiful uh, chulpas. Chulpas is a funeral now tower, no? Because mm. don't exist this uh, palabra, this wall. Yeah, he's got tower, a big bag of coca leaves. I mean, with his mm -hmm. uh -huh. But for us, it's a chulpas. The very interesting is this is circular. And the other one is a cuadrado. Eh? Yeah, square. Cuadrado. And the door exactly to the east. Why to the east? Sunrise. Because the sun wake up. Yeah. Of course, in the Incas time, in the pre Incas. Oh, yeah, he's got a mouthful of cocoa, is, yeah. Uh, pre Inca cultures. Kind of helps with the altitude. I mean, I, I chew it when and I'm there. <laughs> in the Inca's time, on the pre Inca's time, and put in the fetal position. Yeah. Well, these stones are curved, that I think. This the new being. Uh, They're definitely curved. Mm -hmm. Then these ones are more square, polygonal. Back to the universal mother. There's Jimmy. Because this the spirit wake up, revolve. We can actually go inside one of them here too, I think. Oh yeah, we're nearly at two, yeah, it's 12,900 something feet. It looks like these towers are both marred by from this direction. Probably look down and see the bus. Yeah, there's the bus there's there. There's the bus. Yep. So we walked up. <laughs> Probably pretty solid 500 feet or so. Rella, woo! Uh -huh. Made it. Do we have signal? Yeah. Come on, give me the heart. Thirteen thousand. 291 feet. Okay, so over 13,000 feet, so nearly, nearly yeah. 13, 3. Well, we puff a little bit up here. Well, I'm, down, I'm even down the hill a little bit so, uh, down there, so it's easy, probably 13,291 feet. iPhone's 13,291. So, yeah, big yeah, square yeah. one, round one. It's a few others. So, what he said, right? Is it? This is what exactly what it was. Do it. Uh, you, yeah, can of oxygen with you. Yeah, there's that. You can get like the little cans of oxygen in Cusco and stuff. How long does it take you to get a climate? A, a climate? You're almost at the height of commercial. No, not that high. I think forty thousand feet in the airline and the commercial airlines. Um, you can get a tin of oxygen in Cusco, just like a. Ten, it actually, it's nice to take a hit of it every so often. We had Nancy with us who was had a bottle of oxygen, here, I think, man. with her. She struggled <laughs> pretty hard. It takes a few days. Pro, I'd say three, four <laughs> days, generally, for most day. people, is going to be sufficient. I do, I do pretty well at at at, at altitude. So, um, you definitely feel it for a few days. You might have a, a like a mild headache or whatever. <laughs> you have emerged. Yeah, man. There's literally a human skull in there. Yeah. Not like a piece of it. Nice. That's wild. So you get the three windows in there. Yeah. Three false windows. This is. Look at this. I'm blown away. All right. Isn't it amazing? Have you been in there before? No. Oh, now's this one. the time. Now is the time. Yeah, Ancient sanctum in inside. In One of those look like it exploded at some point. Yeah, the ones at Silistani look like totally look like they've exploded. Yeah. See you, Ancient. Wow. Red. Oh, 
chunks of human skulls and things. Coca leaves his offerings. I got it. <laughs> it's an offering. <laughs> it's another alcove up here. Well, look, there's a shelf on either end, almost like there was a walkway across the top or yeah. second floor. Um. Well, they, you heard Wilco explain it a minute ago that they're considered by the Inca, they're considered as uh, funeral buildings for burials. And the, the opening does face east. So, it's, you know, the sun rises in the east. But they're considered as like funeral burials. Oh. But, but I don't think the Inca built them. They might have used them that way. Yeah, I got it. Very cool, like this, the whole construction is super typical, megalithic, like these corners cut, non-linear kind of masonry. You, see, you don't see a lot of the square stuff in Peru, but so the store. And so you can see like the ramps that were built from the local stone, like the probably the Inca pile and stuff up on top and, and re renovating them and refurbishing them. You see these big lintel blocks on top. Story not as much graffiti Inca. as Egypt. There's a little bit, but not much. Went to cover these up with these ramps of rock. This is all pre-Inca structures. <laughs> Yada. Yada. Made it all the way up. Good stuff. Well, it's 13,300 feet here. I'm actually up on the ramp here. Oh. Seb. There he is. <laughs> so you see the difference in stone, right? Like, pretty obvious. So here's like, this might have been, you see the Inca are trying to build one here, probably make a, a smaller one. Same sort of arrangement of stonework that you see everywhere here where you have the megalithic stuff is covered by primitive you see another one like this is obviously another another primitive inca construction you know imitation very much in line with what the inca were capable of okay coming and they I mean the inca built a lot of the terracing i mean they did a lot of work you know ton of work i'm gonna get down to the egypt trip photo Ramp Trying not to die. So this is Silistani? Yeah, this is Silistani. This is literally the other the other Chulpa Tower site. So this is down at the lake. Not as much climbing involved. It's a little bit, but See the same thing here these giant these are like the exploded ones here at silistani so there's a chulpa site that's katimbo then you have silistani they both have these chulpa towers there's also like evidence really large constructions at silistani these big blocks man some of them are huge and then it goes down further i mean yeah that's what we do on these streams we look at the raw footage I don't know, I might go through some of this on the... I'm going to do... Also, guys, so Friday, I think. Friday, I'm going to start streaming on Rumble. So there, will be, there won't be any... Fucking rope this off, huh? There won't There's be any... Um, last time I was here. Ads and stuff on there, at least. The continuing trend of bullshit. But I'm going to start... I'm going to start streaming at least once a week on Rumble as an alternative platform, but I'll, I'll put the details in the... I'll probably tweet and do everything there to let people know about that and then I'll put that in the in the uh, the discord too Spanish destruction at this site we don't I mean there's lots of yeah the Spanish destroyed lots of stuff but we don't know specifically I mean yeah I'm sure there is part of this is probably tore apart by the Spanish jackpot thank you yeah I, I, apparently it's my um, affiliate anniversary I mean not that that's a big deal anyone can be an affiliate on Twitch pretty much Yeah, 
Uh, David, I know what you mean. Massive losses. Commercial flights fire instruments only if 20k feet max. Are you talking about airlines and stuff? Airlines, like when you fly to Egypt, you'd be flying at 40,000 feet. Fuck you. <laughs> Me and my potty mouth. That was in the video, though. No. No, no, no. Airlines fly a lot, lot higher than 20,000 feet. Just huge blocks. Like instruments only. Yeah. Yeah, this is a big, big old, big old blocks of nubs and things. And, it, you know, very weathered, same thing you see, like just tremendous kind of weathering. It's not even as huge much nubs. weathering as you see in the really old stuff in Peru either. Like there's definitely an older layer as well here. You see the Chupatera in the background there and the other ones over here. And over here. I've got a lot more footage of Silistani from... Man, when was that? 2013. 13? No, 2019. When I went back there. I was first time. I don't have that much of it from 2013. I've got photos. But archaeology is different now, though. But now, archaeology is completely different. Archaeology is science. I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist. Uh, it's usually um, feet above sea level. Not quite in the general energy. Yes. Yeah, you're up pretty high. Huge, huge blocks. I mean, I've been up at nearly 20,000 feet. That's Kilimanjaro. It's like 19.4. It is settled. It was settled in Chicago. No, it wasn't settled in Chicago. Shame on you. It wouldn't be a stream without Spud Doctor if there wasn't at least one mum joke in there. All those nasty little thorny plants. Some of these were cool uh, videos too. This is back with the old Osmo. Stinging nettles, yeah. What's the middle of that pile of rocks to say nose climbing? I don't know. Yeah, Kilimanjaro close to 20,000 feet. Yep, it's... I think it was 19,400, I think might be the top of that. 19,400 something or other. I stood on the top of Kilimanjaro. I'd do it again. Well, you, it wasn't bad. I mean, you we acclimatized to it. I mean, we spent two nights at 16,000 feet. We, I think the whole trip was eight days, starting from about 7,000 feet. I still have that video in the works too. I've been I've been threatening to do that video for like three years now. The Kilimanjaro video. I've like literally made graphics for it. I've got like this nice overlay of the trail map on like a 3D model in Google Earth. In fact, if I load, if I spin up Google Earth on my other computer here, it's, I think you can zoom in on Google Earth. It's got the trail map sort of overlaid over it. it took me forever to do that. So yeah, some of these just look like they've been completely blown apart. Um, this giant one here too, this giant circle thing here. It's massive. Don't know what it was. Could have been a big one, you know. Yusuf's tour is short. I think it's like 14 days maybe with Yusuf. 14 or 15. Still two weeks plus the days around it. I think the... 
Well, in fact, I can tell you if we look at the structure of the um, of the trip, it was 13, 14 days. So day one. So it's but you got to count like the day zero is kind of like the start day. So added it's fourteen days because day zero is the first day. It's like we start with the meeting at six o'clock in the evening, but we went out to the Wall of the Crow that day as well. But it starts so you're either arriving on day one, and which means you were straight into it, or some people come the day before, and then you do so it's fifteen days total because the last day is I think on this day we went into the Great Pyramid. Mm, no, it's fourteen days because then fourteen the, includes the leaving day. Because we uh, the last day, which is day thirteen technically, uh, we did the Great Pyramid from nine p.m. to eleven p.m. and then the fourteenth day was the leaving day, basically. <laughs> Why not dig? Yeah, I mean, just it's so. Yeah, there's so many places like that where it's like, why not dig? You know. And yeah, you're right, our timeline keeps getting older. But I mean, just humans ourselves, the uh, fossil records were about 300,000 years, but we have the genetic and DNA evidence as well as teeth morphology studies that put us at more like eight to 900,000 years old. So damn near a million years old. So well, actually, I want to. I'll show you the. So some of these again, these look like they've exploded. This is the one that looks like it's exploded to me. There's blocks all over the place from this thing. It's kind of looked like the back just blew out of it. I haven't done much research on these towers either. Like. I can't understand the, um, you know, the Inca explanation for them. But again, we see sort of, you see one in the background right there. There's a primitive mound version of these, which are very much, again, you see the same damn thing. It's that imitation we see at um, places like Napa Huaca. It's like, you see it here, right? Like where you've got this imitation stone and we saw on the other side, the small imitation towers that they make. We see the same thing with those those trapezoidal shaped alcove windows that are made from megalithic stonework, like in the Coricancha. And then you definitely see it at, at uh, Napa Huaca, where there's, they literally make it right next to it, which is kind of cool. I think uh, if we go down to Peru 21. Yeah, this, so this here is the Napa Huaca. Did I take more pictures of it? I must have. Any evidence of casing stones in other megalithic sites, or or is that a pyramid exclusive? No, there's others. Others, I mean, you have casing stones at the Valley Temple, the Mortuary Temple. This site out in the desert here's got like casing stones on it. I mean, it's. Let's see if we got the footage of it here. Yeah, here we go. This thing out here. It's like this crazy big megalithic structure out in the in the Western Desert near the Fayum. Pretty sure it's like I don't know if it's got casing stones on it, but you definitely had the casing stone thing is not just pyramids. There's other like megalithic construction sites have like a limestone core that are cased in granite. At Abu Sir, you have you have mega, you have limestone core blocks that are cased in basalt. Um, right. Kasser Kasser El Saga is the name of this discovered in 1884 well it's certainly more than 120,000 years ago it's a lot more we're a lot older than that they think it's unfinished the tower looks so industrial yeah, from that perspective they do 
It's the microscopic wildlife you have to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very funny. It's mostly the microscopic wildlife in um in the in the in the um the Serengeti that are the issue. There's no none of, no mosquitoes up high. You really want to go on the Egypt tour? I'm wondering if you do any shorter trips. 16 days too long with your job. Uh, I mean, no, nothing planned right now. I usually do 14 to 16 days in these, though, with these. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I'm trying to make these things a bit more of a regular upload to my second channel here, the Uncharted X Live channel. So please do consider subscribing uh, to this channel. That really helps me out. Big thanks to Dub Selector for taking the time to edit these videos. Very much appreciate his help on this. Also, if you want to catch me live over on Twitch, I am streaming two, three times a week. I generally announce when I'm going to stream in my Discord. So if you want to join the Discord, take a look below in the comments. There'll be a link to the Discord. And if you like the work that I'm doing, please do consider supporting the channel through the value for value model. There's lots of ways that you can support the work that I'm doing. It's all outlined on my website. It's unchartedx.com support. We'll catch you in the next one.